Hi, and welcome to the video where we cover parallel and perpendicular lines. We're talking about how to recognize them and how to calculate them and look at maybe a typical format of a question that you might see on this topic. So parallel lines. First of all, I, I like to start with symbology. Um, anytime you see two vertical lines written, um, like let's say you saw that line one and then they wrote two lines and then line two, this means that these two lines are parallel, right? So those two, two vertical lines, and that makes sense, right? Two parallel lines represent parallel lines. So here, parallel lines are represented by that symbol. But if you saw something like um, line one, and then this like upside down T, and then line two, that would mean that these two lines are perpendicular. And perpendicular just means that the lines cross perpendicular. They cross each other at a 90 degree angle, right? So you can almost think of this symbol right here. We have one line and another crossing. You can almost see that 90 degree angle between them. So parallel, of course, and I should have said this, they mean, it means that two lines are never going to meet or cross. Whereas perpendicular means not only do they cross, but they cross at a 90 degree angle. So for example, right, if we just have a, a grid or whatever and we want to draw some of these things, if, and I'm not going to be exact here, it's just a sketch, but if I draw this line, right, this blue line, we'll call that line, line A. Well, if I want to draw parallel lines to that, all I have to do is draw lines that have the same slope. And this means that this line, right, and this line, which is a different color, the same slope, the same y and x are related in the same way, right? All of these lines, this is line C, and of course line B, right? They're all parallel to each other. They'll never meet. Now, of course, I'm saying estimation because the tricky part is if these slopes are even slightly off, eventually they'll hit each other. And it looks like the way I drew line C that eventually it would meet line A. Like even if it was way, way outside of the grid here, they might eventually meet. And that's why just drawing these things is not really enough. You have to calculate the slope, but here we're just introducing the concept, right? So we can write that, oh, line A is parallel to line B, and that's parallel to line C. Now let's, let's have fun here and, and draw another line. Here, right, if I draw this line, Maybe this is parallel, maybe not perfect, but that's what I'm trying to imply. But the thing is, if I change it even slightly, right, you could see that as these lines go along, the gap between them is narrowing. And eventually, maybe far outside here, this line, of course we'll call it line D, will cross B and A and C. So, I mean, it'll first cross line B, but eventually it'll cross the others as well. It'll just happen further. So if line D is not parallel to line C, well then it's also not parallel to B or A. And now I'm curious, what is the symbol for not parallel? I'm gonna have to look that one up. Um, but you could say they're not parallel. So once you've established again that your line is not parallel to any one of these lines, it's not parallel to all the others. And now let's introduce perpendicular. A perpendicular line will have to come down like this, right? And it'll cross line A, B, and C at a 90 degree angle. So maybe like that right there. Okay, so this line, line E, is perpendicular to all of the other lines, right? Because it crosses them at a 90 degree angle. It's almost perpendicular to D, but that's not 90 degrees right here. It just can't be, and I'll, I'll leave you to think about why, but even if the slope is a little bit off there, it won't cross at the same angle. So again, once this line E is perpendicular to one of the lines, it's perpendicular to all of them. And I think in terms of getting your, your, your thinking about this up to speed, think about what's happening. Notice what, what the slope is, is how the slope is affecting what's happening. Well, let's start with the parallel lines. C, A, A, B, and C all have the exact same slope. So what's going to happen with parallel lines is, right, parallel lines have, and let me 
fix my pen here, power lines have equal slopes. So whatever the equations of these lines are, they all have the exact same slope. But perpendicular lines, well, let's just talk about the, the what's happening, right? This slope right here, if the slope of line A, for example, is positive, so as x is increasing, so is y, can the slope of the perpendicular line to it also be positive? The answer is no, right? If this slope on line A is positive, the perpendicular line has to have a negative slope. And if we start with a negative slope here, line E, then line A, which is also perpendicular, right? This can go both ways. Line A is perpendicular to E. Since line E over here has a, a negative slope, the lines that are perpendicular to it have a positive slope. So what else is happening? Well, if you look at the points on line E, let me find a good reference point let's say right here at this point, as I go over and down, the slope of line E is about what? And I'm just estimating, I'm going, let me choose a different color here so we can see what's happening before it gets too cluttered. I'm going from this point to this one and I'm finding the slope. Well, for line E, that means we go down by 10 and over or up by 10. So line E has a slope of negative 10 over 10. That's negative 1, right? But what about line A? What's the, the slope of line A? And again, this is all estimation, so it's going to be a little bit off. Um, so here, if I start at this point and go here, I go up 10 and over 10. So instead of being down 10 and over 10, I could put it on this way for line E, I go up 10 and over 10. So not only, and then line A, I'm sorry, line A, the slope would be 10 over 10, or 1. So the slopes are not only in opposites, so if one's positive and negative with perpendicular lines, they're also reciprocals. So here, right, the slope, the slope for, for M, or for line A, is positive 10 over 10. So the slope for the line that's perpendicular to it would be negative 10 over 10. So we can say that perpendicular lines have, that's not going to work, have slopes, right, that are opposite, so opposite slopes, have opposite, oops, slopes, that are also reciprocals. Reciprocals, oh, I ran out of room there, sorry. Slopes, opposite slopes, and they are reciprocals of each other. I'll write that word over here, reciprocals. Reciprocals, of course, mean when you add them, right? If I add up these two slopes, I would get zero. That just repeats the idea that they're opposites. And usually this is referred to as the negative reciprocal. So a short way of saying that is that perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals. Sorry, this is sloppy right here. Um, but negative reciprocal means that if you have one, one slope of the line that's negative, the line perpendicular to it will have a positive slope, right? And it's the reciprocal, so if you add up the two slopes together, they'll equal zero. But if you start with a positive slope, the line that's perpendicular will have a negative slope. And I think I've already covered enough here in this video, so let me um, stop it here. In the next video, we'll look at an example to understand these parallel and perpendicular lines because you're really not going to be sitting there drawing stuff you're going to be sitting there probably calculating because these drawings are really hard to make very accurate. So the idea is you can be precise with your algebra and I'll show you how to do that in the next video. Thanks.